Welcome to a podcast series where I have conversations with people whose practice brings creativity, technology, culture, history and future together. I am Fazan Naveed and this is The Present Future. Hi, so, hi, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Uh, so, uh, it's been actually a really great opportunity and I'm really humbled that I've been honored to talk to you on, for my research and for the podcast. And uh, would uh, uh, would you please introduce yourself for our audience, like just a short interview? Thought, right? but, uh, uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. My uh, my name is Saks Afridi, Saqib Afridi. You can call me either. Uh, Sax is uh, my stage name, <laughs> but um, I am a uh, Pakistani-born, New York City-based uh, artist and uh, creative director in advertising and a uh, father of two, a uh, husband, a uh, car enthusiast, um, amateur photographer and musician. Great, great, great. Okay, so... How much, uh, my first question is, how much are you interested in image generators or AI in, at large? I've been extremely interested in image generation ever since I uh, first, I guess, m- m- encountered it being used in a, in, in a very advanced uh, way that, that we've been seeing in the last couple of years in the world of uh, of, uh, of NFTs, uh, photographers like uh, Ravi Vora, for example, uh, really kind of opened my eyes uh, in, in, into this world because he was doing it before others were, and so I thought it was some kind of sorcery magic. Does he have access to, you know, this uh, uh, top secret? um tools and yes at the time they were very uh clunky and uh early he he was just early stages right uh but some of the work that uh, he made with uh flowers and nature and what all it did uh that now we can easily just you know prompt out in mid journey no problem but uh 3 years ago it was kind of a big deal or it felt like a a real change in um uh art history i thought and so then with the rise of open ai uh dali uh mid journey stable diffusion uh all of this has started uh, just skyrocketing at a pace of uh uh you know a, a portion 911 <laughs> everything is just uh changing very rapidly every week there are new tools um, ways of um, I- improving uh, efficiency, getting better and faster at things. So it's pretty amazing to time to be alive and to see all of this. Uh, I have been involved in it personally as well uh, in my art practice. Uh, I- I've worked on a series of, um, I guess I would also call them as blueprints for future sculptures. Uh, but I, the way I- I've been using AI tools is I, I feed it my own um artworks that i have previously made and i ask it to make um variants of it or i ask it to add certain things that i've been thinking about uh within the themes of my work and use it that way and then from there i sort of go deeper and deeper into uh the levels and layers and iterations uh to to kind of get what i'm looking for but it's been a fantastic tool for that for uh idea generation for um, blueprinting future works uh, and also just kind of expanding possibilities of one of what one's repertoire of work can be. Uh, so Simon, I'm working right now on a project. I'll give you an example um, with uh, miniaturist Kosser Iqbal in Lahore. And he and I have worked on 
three paintings in the past before uh, this concept called gravity. I, I, I've applied this concept in a couple of my woven rugs, but then also in um, this uh, composition that I uh, the, 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 uh, and concept I developed. But then I was introduced through um, this organization in Philadelphia called 12 Gates, um, uh, 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 Aisha Khan uh, and, uh, and her husband Atif, they both run it. And uh, they introduced me to Kosar Iqbal back in, I want to say, 2015, uh, because I went to them with this idea of, hey, listen, I've got this concept for a miniature painting. Can I, can you connect me with uh, an excellent miniaturist to help bring it to life? So along the way, Kosar and I uh, developed this relationship and uh I'm just, just sort of giving you a background of what we're coming to today. This I, I promise you this all has a, <laughs> a link and a connection if, if you think I'm just uh, meandering. Uh, but he and I built a relationship and a wonderful collaborative working relationship. Uh, what I particularly also love is that um, he's, he's from Swat and my, uh, so both our mother tongues are Pashto. So we actually speak to each other on WhatsApp messages uh, in Pashto, and that's essentially how we communicate in making this work. I've never done that with any other artist, uh, and I collaborate with a lot of people, so uh, it's it's my little, um, you know, sort of uh, connection to home that way as well. But uh, so we'd worked on these paintings, and, you know, they'd, uh, it was a wonderful experience. They'd, they'd done, um, they'd, they've all found homes in collectors homes so i fed ai i fed the ai our original paintings and the concept of gravity within it and it it, it um it gave me back some interesting um outputs and then i further refined them and refined them uh and and these are watercolor uh miniature uh indo-persian miniature paintings we're talking about and so we further refined them until I found some new variants of the same theme, uh, essentially generative. And then um, Kosar and I decided to get the band back together. And now Kosar is uh, taking the, these um, AI-generated images based on our previous painting uh, paintings and is painting them. So we're, we're, we're going to have essentially by a filter, uh, or I guess it's triple, triple filtered at this point, uh, going back from man to machine to man to machine, <laughs> back to man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this brings me to two questions right now. All right. Yeah, yeah. One is like, uh, so do you use these image inverters or AI just for uh, mockups or blueprint or... And, and your second one is like your practices uh, very much uh, based on collaborations like Hawaii Chippel and you have this uh, group with Kinza Najam, uh, Polo, and you collaborate with many other people, right? So yes. you work basically in collaboration. So do you think that AI is also a collaborator? Or is, is it just a tool for Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a collaborator. Absolutely a collaborator. Uh, so just right. coming back to your first question, um, before, uh, before I get uh, pulled into the second, uh, yeah, the the way the the tool. Wait, what was your first question? The first question was: Do you just use it uh, for blueprints or to thank make mockups or to see iterations? Yes. So when I get, uh, I, I essentially for blueprints. Short answer: uh, Use it for blueprints and. Um, so as as the foundation. Okay. Yes. So starting point foundation. So, so for example, what Kosar is painting uh, these days, and I, and and I love this this time when we're working together because I wait. He's in Pakistan. I'm in New York. I wake up every morning and I see like new additions and messages from him, and then you know I'm responding back. So, made a you know is uh, is uh, like with my morning coffee. Uh, coffee and Kosar is my morning. Time. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so um. Yeah, you know, he receives these uh, the, the, these outputs and then he prints them. And our goal is to um, 
not 100% fix things. Uh, and we want to incorporate AI as very much a part of this process. Uh, so Ajkal AI may, you know, like it's still in its infancy, uh, visually at least. So you'll notice that you, you'll see a lot of AI generated images. I'm not sure if you've played with any, but if you ask it to make a hand, it'll sometimes give it six fingers or yeah. it'll take away a couple or the facial expressions will look like, a, you know, a, a, a Francis Bacon painting or something like that. It won't, uh, uh, it, it won't be a hundred percent uh anatomically accurate there'll be a third leg or a fourth uh you know or or, or a, a twisted mouth or something like that so i i i actually really like the 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 way that the ai does that and costa and i were talking about this and we were thinking you know let's preserve this let's incorporate this into the work not just because uh of a nod and uh, of, of, of collaboration that there is now a third entity among us. Uh, but also from an art historical perspective, uh, you know, one hopes that, uh, that um, years down the line, uh, people look at this work and they will think and they will say, oh, this was circa 2023. Ha, remember when AI couldn't even make hands properly? Uh, or, or like how, you know, like w we look at this as, um, I, I guess I equate it to that nostalgic sound of the 56K modem turning on. Uh, and, and this may be something like that. And, and again, just sort of connecting it to cars, I see nostalgia uh, as being a very powerful tool in, you know, in the way people feel about older cars. And the, from a uh, historical perspective and what makes what, you know, and like, oh, this car was uh, is very important because it was the first year of this happening and, uh, you know, that happened and all that stuff. So similarly, uh, here, I think historically and even art uh, history wise, technology, culturally, all of it, uh, this is a time that should be documented in the work that we make because later on, uh, it'll be associated with that era. Uh, so well, we're doing some of it, but at the same time, we're not copying it exactly because uh, Gossett has to bring his uh, his hand and style into it. And that plays a big, big part of it. It's not like this is just a, uh, a carbon copy from uh, a print uh, of a digitally generated print onto a painting. No, it, it, it is filtered through a, uh, a seasoned and highly gifted miniature artist. Uh, and, and so um, that, that that is also the additional sort of level of uh, layer of uh, collaboration that goes on between the three of us. Uh, you know, uh, so yeah, I would definitely say AI is very much a collaborator in, in, in part of this. Um, now, Will I uh, split the profits with AI like I'm doing with Grosser? No. <laughs> but, uh, but the, you know, I, I noticed the other day another Pakistani artist, Sara Shakil. Uh, yeah. She's a, a, a photographer, digital artist, uh, well, more of a digital artist uh, than a, a photographer, although I'm sure she does photography as well. Um, she released some photos of what were they they were macaroons like millions of macaroons on a on a lake i think it was that venice or something uh the, so i just saw it and then she credited the work as sara shakil um x ai so x meaning multiply sign matlab collaboration sign etc uh yeah. so this idea of adding ai into the uh, list of collaboration is also some is a, is a curious thing because I don't know if we need to because the way that this is going in the future everything is probably going to be collaborated with AI in some form of the other so will it even be uh, necessary and do you write Photoshop when you collaborate with photo or when you use Photoshop or do you write uh, Illustrator now I understand these tools are a lot more advanced and they do way more 
than what an Adobe Photoshop can do. But if you look at Adobe Pho where Adobe Photoshop is going with Firefly and its new uh, content aware tools and, gener and generative tools that it's developing right now, it's going to be all part of it. So then do you accredit um, do you credit Photoshop as a, is it a, uh, a Saxa Freely Costarik Bal Adobe Photoshop work? Yeah. <laughs> so, then, you would have to, uh, then you would have to like collaborate with, uh, you would have to mention each and every other thing, like for Costa, you would have to wash and watercolors and brush and for yourself Photoshop and all the other softwares. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Wesley paper. Yeah, although less of a collaborator, more of a medium. But yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Tools, exactly. More like uh, the brushes. Yes. 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 Oh, that's interesting. Actually, that would be that would be pretty cool. Where you break it down all the way to uh <laughs> to, 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 to uh, the Windsor, Windsor and Newton. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> because it, it becomes part of medium then i believe right when we say oil on linen yeah on oil, where does the tool end and the medium begin yeah yeah so it's so basically that's a really good debate i would think about it for future references as well so i was just thinking <laughs> the, oh wait and then what would you sorry go ahead go ahead i was gonna ask no, you what please. your second question was but go ahead you were saying yeah both questions were related like for the mock if you use mock uh, ai for the mock up and do you think it has a collaborator i think you've answered both of them uh in quite detail so that we are good for that uh, i was thinking like uh i i remember your minaret works where you know, somewhere in karachi the minaret falls and every, every 24 hours one prayer is wished granted so that work what is it called uh face mask face mask yes and uh, if i was just thinking that you made this face mask and, and your work is generally very sci-fi influenced or it has a very sci-fi feel ufos on the carpet and the rugs yeah and the prayer rug. so how much are you influenced from sci-fi like your practice yeah, quite a bit i mean i just like the the the, the vibe and the uh uh, energy and the sense of hope that sci-fi gives. Uh -huh. Which uh, is your favorite show? I that's that that's a very hard question. I think uh, uh, influence my 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 influences probably go are, are varied. Uh, it's it, it's hard to say because you know one likes certain things for aesthetics, other things for concept. Uh, uh, it's it's a mix. It's a hard one to answer. All right. Um, all right. Whether whether show or music, but uh, uh, I mean, at the time when I was making Space Moss work, uh, Blade Runner twenty twenty four, The Arrival, um, obviously, you know, S Star Wars is just. Uh, I I remember seeing Star Wars as a kid in the movie theaters in nineteen eighty. One, oh, okay. uh, it was my first movie theater experience. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, uh, uh, or was it New Hope? I think it was New Hope. Uh, and so that uh, it's it's been kind of uh, in, in ingrained in me from from early on. So it's it's, it's hard to say which, but yeah, uh, I, I I like the I, I like the idea of um, new worlds, new rules, uh, new possibilities, new hopes. Uh, you know the 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 the, the beginning, uh, even even Star Trek. You know, there's the, the there's a lot there as well. So there's the um, there's that side of it uh, that I like. It's not all dystopian. There's the uh, or or utopian. I just think uh, it's it's a great study in uh, human psychology and the idea of the beyond. And I also love. Um, the thing, this this mystery, the sense of mystery that comes with sci-fi as well, of, uh, of not knowing everything the, the in the search yeah. for the reason I going asked out this and question, looking further. Yeah, the reason I asked you this question was because, you know, you're from the generation who have seen the evolution of technology, like from the LPs, the cassette tapes, the CDs, DVDs, and then Blu-rays, and then no more CDs at all to the cloud yeah. devices. And, and uh, all the sci-fi, you know, have an element of this progression one way or another. And what, how, how do you think, like now when AI is here, it's actually a game changer, right? So 
it's it's really fascinating to a lot of people, even to the new generation. Like something like this is happening. You are just saying, and the computer is making Im- images. It's making songs. It's mixing things. So how do you take that the, the shift in the culture? Like this is a big jump, I believe. Yeah, huge jump, huge jump. But like well, what what all it can do is uh, this is you know internet level jump, if not if not more, if not bigger. Uh, yeah, that's we're we're not really fully seeing it, but every day I'm kind of blown away. Yesterday I saw this thing for Runway, which is this video making app, and it just makes these videos just based on you know some selfies that you take, but they're so dreamlike, you know. And uh, when we, it's like uh, they're they're very surreal and uh, real at the same time. So it's it's very. Uh, I can understand why people are afraid of it uh, because it's just <laughs> so out of this world and, you know, something that powerful can also be dangerous. Uh, and if we know anything about human history and human nature is that we are, you know, that, that that's what happens in space mosques because, you know, we, 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 we fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and that will ha- that's what happens in a, in a lot of reality. Um, but yeah. So this is very interesting, like and the, the, speed, the pace at which AI is progressing, it's evolving. How do you suggest that we should cope up with it? You know, like one day I'm looking at, you know, I'm working on, as you said, uh, Runaway, I'm Gen 1, and the next week there's Gen 2, and then, you know, there's one kind of language model, then there's stable diffusion coming up with another version yeah. of it. I think... We all have to put like um, in, install an imaginary uh, turbo in our minds. Uh, <laughs> That's a really because, good idea. Because it's just happening so fast that we have to start absorbing information uh, and absorbing these changes at that uh, f- faster. There's just, you know, so much that is happening in the space. And development going on that if you're not, if you don't really kind of, uh, I mean, if you want to be involved in the space, you, you have to be accepting of new things. Oh, ye bhi ho sakta hai. Chalo, aaj ye bhi ho sakta hai. There's literally new inventions being made every day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's too fast. I mean, so the turbo I mean, is not necessarily just an absorption, but an acceptance as well. That, I think that that's, that's, a, that's a, big part of, a big part of it. It's just, we have to accept that, all right, this change is happening fast. Yeah. Instead of, yeah. you know, the ostrich approach of head in the sand. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I remember one of your works um, where you worked with, there was a lot of algorithm, uh, moving portals, I think it's called. Uh, yes. Where the forms, can you a little bit, uh, explain a little bit about it so that, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. It, 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 so it is something like working with the computer, working with the AI. Was it AI based or was it just? No, nope, it was not AI based. It was. It was. I would say that was the most handmade generative stuff, uh, and uh, it, it was made entirely using Adobe Illustrator. Oh, that that's super dope! Oh. By the way, the work is super dope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I just used the Blend tool in an interesting way. All right. Uh, and- so that's uh, and now the blend tool. What just you know for, for the audience and in, in general to kind of explain it really quick. I can take three. Uh, let's say I take three objects, three motifs, three designs, th- three different things, um, drawings, and I outline them uh, all all in vector. And then I connect them. I connect to three different points, one on each object, and I can give those uh, connections. I can make them into any shape I want. Uh, and then I ask the tool to blend these three objects together, blend their outlines together. And I can tell it, all right, blend it eight times, blend it 11 times, blend it seven times, like however many uh, I want to, however many times I want to blend it. So if I, for example, one object is a square and the other object is a triangle and I say blend these two together, it will basically create multiple images in between them as a line 
going from square, transforming to triangle. Now imagine doing this with uh, the three objects being uh, like the central medallion of a Persian rug, uh, a spaceship uh, navigation interface, and a piece of uh, calligraphy. And then connecting these these three objects together in an in a in a warped and curvy kind of way, uh, so that they all sort of blend in and and interconnect with each other, where you can't tell which is which. And that was essentially the 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 process of making these. But they were all done by hand in Adobe Illustrator using the blend tool. Now, I understand they look generative but uh in, in fact at the time when I, I was making them and i was sort of sharing them on twitter people were referring to them as outputs and i wanted to and i was like no 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 these aren't outputs <laughs> these are artworks <laughs> and then that brought the other question of well what is out what is an artwork and what is an output uh and, and so that was another sort of conversation uh, that we had but yeah woven portals were done in adobe illustrator uh, it's funny, it's the my generative work looks handmade, and my handmade work looks generative. So funny. Which 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 brings me to another question that arises from it. Like then now uh, we have image generators and images are being made. So how does one differentiate between a regular image generated through AI and an AI image that is an artwork? I think uh, the creator uh, of the image determines whether it is an artwork or not. All right. Uh, so something like uh, I asked them in a kind of question with the, the other part, uh, other uh, then we know him, right? So he said he didn't want to uh, state the cliche, but he just said it that uh, it's the intention of an artist. So do you agree with it? Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, same thing. Yeah, same thing. All right. um, you know, you, you also asked me a question earlier about, so, so this is for students and, uh, you know, people who are photographers who are getting into, uh, into the field and are worried about, uh, or, or just, you know, where, where does AI fit into photography? Uh, and, AI has been pretty amazing when it comes to results in not only the texture and the lighting, but also in composition. Uh, so, but at the same time, I, th I think there's a certain aspect of uh, uh, human input that goes into photography that um, is not you know, it is not there in AI. I was watching this wonderful video on YouTube about a uh, an iPhone photographer. Uh, now, an iPhones are wonderful and they're the best camera in your pocket, but uh, they're not the best camera and they're not the best lens compared to, you know, regular digital cameras. Uh, so, but... The video made the point of, well, you can use that to your advantage because you don't have to, you can't win on lensing. You can't win on getting that perfect uh, book air, depth of field, or, you know, any of that. But you can win on composition. And so you can, the, the this series was uh, a photographer who works at the New York Times office uh, it's an interesting architectural building and the light comes in differently and he or she took photos just of everyday objects and desks and chairs and tables and shadows and light and you know very basic mundane things but they look wonderful because of the way that they're composed and the way they work with light and shadow and contrast uh, and they can take the meaning of something as ordinary as an everyday stapler but uh, you know change its perspective or change the way it's sort of seen or look. And that can only happen through human observation. And so the idea of a photographer just being a, a, a an observer of frames and constantly, uh, you know, 
connecting and making compositions everywhere their eye looks kind of like you know the terminator does when he's always focusing on things like especially in terminator one it's like that photographers do this all the time everywhere they're looking uh we're looking uh we're looking at compositions we're looking at framing uh so but we're also looking for meaning in those compositions and frames uh so i think that's something that uh ai does not do you can ask it to do all that but then you lose that moment of the, the serendipitous nature of it all the spontaneity of it all uh if you really have to sit and think about it and tell the ai ke ye 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 uh but um but you yeah. know the ai can one day also be spontaneous too and it is currently in its own form it is spontaneous you just have and that may give you other other ways of looking at it. So again, using it as a tool, you know, one can learn of interesting ways of uh, uh, of composing and placement and lighting and all of that from it as well. But to be there at that moment and to capture a composition and uh, in a certain light and making certain choices of uh, aperture, shutter speed, framing, uh, all of that, I think that that, that is a very human uh, process. Yeah, I also um, agree with you because one thing that they are lack at least for now is the curiosity. But it's not as curious as humans. Like, that part of it, Sorry, it, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Could you repeat that again? I'm saying that, uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I was saying that, yes, I was saying that because uh, AI is not as curious as humans. We get to, uh, to be that that is our innate quality to be curious, you know, to look into things and AI just worked on data, a set of data. So that's why so thinking I was thinking out loud of this. What you just said, so do you think AI will ever take over photography on a whole, just like digital cameras that took over analog photography in a mass sense? So Digital took over film. It didn't yeah. take over photography. The photography still continued. Yeah, so I was just making a connection. Like, do you think AI would ever do that to photography? Uh, no. So similarly, I think the photography will still continue. Uh -huh. Because moments of time will still happen. And those will continue to be captured by humans. So I don't think AI will take over photography. Uh, th there's something about this was a real moment versus this was a generated moment. And yeah. photography is capturing of a moment, essentially. Um, or at least one way of looking at it is a capture of a moment. The other way of looking at it is uh, yeah. capturing of an idea. Now, yeah. now, AI can do that. That it can definitely do is it can encapsulate a concept or an idea. But then you're looking at photography as, um, you know, almost as uh, similar as uh, a CGI creation at that point, you know? Uh, it's, it's, it's no different than creating a CG scene and a CG character. You're just asking AI to do it in the style of photography. Just like, you know, in the style of a water painting, in the style of, uh, uh, you know, Picasso, or uh, you can ask it to do it in any style. At that point, photography just becomes a style. So I, I don't think so. I don't think, photo to answer your question, I don't think photography is, uh, human photography is going anywhere. Uh, I was saying, like, we were talking about photography and AI before the break, and you put it really well in, in a very poetic way where you said, like, the difference between the moment of time and the moment of time. Thinking on that, I was thinking, like, what is the impact of artificial intelligence and image generators on the creativity? Uh, I think that creative people are naturally curious and hungry uh, and will use AI as just an, an, another tool to expand their um, their palettes, their uh, body of work, their repertoire, whichever word 
you want to use, uh, but to uh, but to improve and expand on their work. Uh, and then there are people who will use it as uh, a tool of just getting something done, using ChatGPT to write, uh, you know, headlines for social posts is not necessarily the most creative task, but it is something that creative people currently do today. So there, the, the, there are a lot of uses. Man, I saw this very, uh, what's, what's it called? It's called something loop. Um, the, the, this tool where you can film five people in a room speaking together and just having like, say for example, a group podcast. And then you feed all those different uh, camera angles into this tool uh, it's a plugin, I think, and it'll organize and just arrange the sound and cut it all, bring it all together, and boom, it's just saved you three hours of work. Now, that's uh, that's huge. That's huge. I like because that's stuff that creative creatives have to do, whether they're making films, whether uh, you know they're they're, they're setting up uh, uh, assets or layers in Photoshop or whatever. Uh, you know, th these are some of the digital native creative to, uh, things that are that are happening. And for that, I think it's very helpful and it will allow digital creatives or digitally led creatives uh, to be able to be more creative so that they don't, they don't have to spend hours of energy doing the mundane things that we used to do. So I, th I think it'll actually end up making us more creative. Uh, and what's more creative? More creative is looking within yourself more. It's trying to find ideas within you out uh, and, and to get it out. And if there's a tool that can help you express yourself better and more efficiently and with a, um, a, lar yeah, a larger quantity of output, then wh why not? That, that, that That's... That's an amazing tool. I, I think that'll only enhance creativity. That, that's really interesting. Oh, so <laughs> one more question. Tell prolific. Me always, that's the word I was looking for. It'll make people more prolific. Pro, uh, prolific. I, I'll write that down. Prolific, yes. Okay. So one last question I must say. Then, so if you ever have to, have you ever thought? By the way, on a school or a college or university? No, not really. Okay. But if you were given a chance to, you know, uh, arrange a workshop or a course, would you be interested in doing that? Yeah. yeah you know, um, uh, uh, Rashid has been kind enough to, to um, ask me to come in anytime, speak whenever, you know. So yeah, could be could be something I could uh, look into doing. I've never really thought about it. I'm just sort of uh, more off the cuff a little bit like that. But yeah. Okay. Could so do. if you were if you were given a chance to teach a photography course as an illustrator or a writer, what would you teach and how would you plan it? A photography course. Yeah. Wow. And an um, AI illustrator. How would I plan it? Uh, I, 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 I would first, I, I think I would hit it in like, well, what, what are the objectives? What, what would I want people to take out of this course? And I think one of it is, one of the main takeaways I would like it to be is kind of what I mentioned a little bit now of capturing uh, moments in time and, and 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 being there those times as well so I, I think there's exercises that can be done with those um, moments in time and then using AI to enhance those moments in time I think would be uh, part w w one of the projects that uh, could be in the class uh, I think weekly conversations with other photographers who are working in AI would be uh, very helpful uh, um, a composition, sense of composition for today's um, for today's viewing, uh, I think is important as well. And when I say today's viewing, I mean 
device I'm holding in my hand, aka my iPhone, uh, which is you know almost everybody's first vi viewing of, uh, of most things visual, right? People, yes, people go to art galleries and museums and you know look at uh, uh, graffiti streets and all sorts of other artworks and street art and everything else too. But for the most part, well, we see stuff on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, you know uh, other platforms. Uh, so thinking about composition for the the scrolling eye, for the scrolling hand, uh, and, and, and getting people to stop, and how do you then get people to sort of further look at photography as um, as an art form, as uh, an, an expanded medium? And I guess that's probably a larger question. I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to think about it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm just sort of speaking off the cuff but uh there there can be yeah e like, even if it's just getting a better sense of composition and getting ai to make the works uh you know be become more interesting or taking it to the next level that's that that that, that, that you know that's fine and i think wait wait actually the, another thing that i would probably close towards the end of the class would be incorporating AI, um, this thing called in painting, incorporating AI elements into your photography. Uh, that's uh, that's another thing I would incorporate as well, because then that that, that changes your uh, you know your your composition a lot, and that changes the meaning of your uh, of the piece as well. But if you go in knowing that you're going to do that in AI, then there's intentionality involved in that, and that's that's different. Like if you take a photo of a uh, of an empty road and then you plan on throwing a, a, a hovering race car over it that's different you know uh, so then there then that photograph was taken with an intention of what to do in the in, in the future using ai so uh, if if i if it can start as the using as a tool to enhance and end towards while using as a tool to collaborate with that that would be a that would be a good a good progression as well i think Interesting. That's quite. I mean, I'm thinking about all these things. If I were your student, what would I do? <laughs> if you were teaching the course, and I would be your student, that would be interesting. Um, I think it would my... be a collaboration. I think it would be a collaboration. Even then. <laughs> Even <laughs> yeah, with, with the student or with the AI. With the student, because <laughs> it it would depend on what the student's into. I think every person has a different relationship with AI, and not everyone's in the same on the same playing field. Some people have dabbled a lot with AI. Some people are very afraid uh, of AI, and so they're you know, all students. You're 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 assuming all students are coming in uh, into the uh, into this course at at the same level of experience with AI, just like how somebody goes from sixth grade to seventh grade or goes from first year of college to second year and everybody knows the same. It, I don't think that's the case today. Um, I think people will be coming at it from all different uh, aspects of experience uh, with AI and, um, and, also, and, and all sorts of baggage uh, with, with it as well. So... I don't think it's going to be a plain field. People, uh, a plain field. But people will. Um, e each student would have to be, almost, you know, in, in semi individually worked with as well, based on what they're looking uh, to get out of it. All right. So it was wonderful talking to you, conversing with you, understanding your perspective on the technology and AI specifically. And thank you for taking out time. And being Absolutely. My uh, it's, it's my pleasure. And for people listening to this in the, in the, in, in the deep future, uh, I, I hope you get a kick out of some of the things that we said today uh, that will sound absolutely nuts and, arch and archaic at, at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I'm honestly, honestly, really grateful for you for taking out time for this. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.